Okay, uh, the general issue here we will talk about the, the service provided at the IP layer and it's a best effort service. It's not best, it's uh, trying the best. And addressing the IP address and sub, the idea of subnet and then forwarding the table lookup, routing the path calculation and then security issue. <coughs> okay, the service here is a host-to-host -host trans transmission service and it connects several LANs into an in inter-network. So it's a, a network of networks. And internet is the largest, the global internet network. So you might have many internet networks and Internet is the largest one, the global internet network to which most of the networks are connected to. And here is <coughs> an example of internet network. Within this internet network you have three LANs, two Ethernet and one wireless LAN. So you have three uh, uh, links and all the links all of the links are broadcast links or point-to-point -point links either way but they form they form a broadcast domain I mean they, they form three broadcast domains each of them form a broadcast domain so you have three broadcast domain but now interconnected by three routers again if you if you roll back to uh, to chapter 3 we can use bridges or layer 2 switches, sometimes we call bridges, sometimes we call layer 2 switches. We can use uh, bridges to repress the router here. We can repress the router here. So you can have uh, several, uh, three uh, bridges or layer 2 switches to interconnect three uh, LANs together. Then uh, if you do that, then these three will do uh, the bridging, self-learning bridging and they will run the spanning tree and you can configure VLAN so but here you, you don't do that so so the answer is uh, you, if you want to interconnect several LANs together you can use either bridging or use either routing either way will do the job and there's no there, there's no concept of subnet but there, but there are concept of uh, broadcast well Three terms. One is the uh, the broadcast domain, and a broadcast domain a broadcast domain can be either uh, a LAN or VLAN or a subnet. So when we talk about uh, for broadcast domain, it is either a LAN or VLAN if you look at it at the link layer but if you look at it from the IP layer it will be a subnet okay and if it's a LAN or VLAN you would you can interconnect them uh, by bridges but if you view them as subnet then you interconnect them uh, by routers and and that means that means they would they would uh, they would have a different subnet address. Say these three will have different subnet addresses. And 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 to route to forward between the subnet, you need routers. But here they don't. They probably are in the same uh, subnet. For example. So, so if I use bridges, okay, instead of using router, I use bridges here, and then uh, I don't, I don't separate it, and, and then uh, there's a, uh, there's a another connection to a router here. Uh, if, suppose these are all bridges or, or layer two switches, and it's connected to a router, then here it's a subnet, but uh, but then they it's a 
three lens, and and then uh, you would have you would have um, you would have to uh, form uh, either three broadcast domain. Each of them will be a broadcast domain, or you can. Uh, put them into one single broadcast domain. Say, I want to form these uh, three LAN together to form one broadcast domain. Then the switches here need to be configured so that they would form a VLAN. They will form a VLAN. So, if, if, so, so then uh, this is physically, it's uh, three separate v, uh, LAN, LANs, right? But in order to to make three lands to form one broadcast domain, then I need to configure VLAN because, uh, as we said, VLAN is artificial LAN. Configure artificially. Okay. Then uh, you need to uh, do that by configuring VLAN. Otherwise, there will be three separate broadcast domain. Okay. And, and then again, uh, why broadcasting is important? Why broadcast matters? Because uh, you will see that uh, many things rely on broadcasting. ARP, you will see that uh, we will see uh, ARP pretty soon, that uh, it rely on broadcasting. If I want to know, I know your IP address, but I need to know your MAC address. Then I need to use ARP. And ARP request is, bound, is sent by broadcasting. So, and then I need to know the the, the, the broadcast domain. I need to form a broadcast domain clearly. Otherwise, uh, the ARP would not work. Okay. So, so that's uh, that's uh, bridging. And we, there's a sidebar uh, in this chapter. There's a sidebar on comparing bridging, bridging versus routing, and it has detailed discussion on that. But I, I'll, I'll talk talk about the. I have talked about it. I have talked about the differences. Uh, you can uh, see a, a clear summary summary there in the sidebar. <coughs> However, as I said, the, the problem with bridging is that it's not scalable. Not scalable. It's transparent, which is good. No configuration needed. You just plug and pray. So plug and pray, transparent, no configuration, they mean the same thing. And it's good. But the bad thing is that it, it's not scalable. Consider uh, if you use this, uh, and there are hundreds of, uh, or even thousands, three land form together form uh, uh, nearly uh, uh, 1,000 uh, stations. <coughs> then uh, if, 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 if I have a frame destined to a particular station, but in my self-learning table, forwarding table, I do not know where which pole it belongs to, then I would do what? I would do what? Frauding. Frauding. Yeah, it's called frauding or broadcasting. I would, I would do broadcasting or frauding. The, the data frame will be frauded or broadcast to the entire broadcast domain. So I would duplicate the frame. And, and imagine that you, you, if you have not just three lands, but uh, many lands, interconnected by bridges, and there are thousands of stations. And occasionally you will have a, a, a frame to an, an unknown destination, then you will fraud. So there will be frequent frauding done by the bridges or the layer two switches, which is inefficient. You create a lot of frauding traffic. So, so as you see that as the number of stations grow, grows, the number of frauding or broadcasting will, will, will increase, which is bad. So that's why it's not scalable. Okay. <coughs> so, so you want to do routing instead of bridging when the network is big. Okay. And <coughs> then uh, with routers, then these three will each form a broadcast domain. You cannot configure VLAN anymore. They are separate subnet. They are separate broadcast domain. And you can, 
and, 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 and the broadcasting is limited only within the subnet. Unlike uh, uh, using bridging, where you can uh, com still configure uh, three lands in t together into into one VLAN. Okay, here you cannot do that. It's separate broadcast domain. And then uh, if, if you have packet from uh, this host to another host here, then you need to you need to send it. You you can say okay, I send a I send a frame. I send a packet, which is a broadcast packet, to the entire sub entire broadcast domain. No, your 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 broadcast packet will be just flooded here, but not here. Okay, so for for the packet destined to a host which is not on the same subnet, what do you do? What would you do? You would send it to this your default router. This is your default router. And then the default router will figure out how to send it to the destination router, and then the destination router will put it on, on the sub on the subnet here. We'll, we'll send it to to this host. So, <coughs> so then uh, you would need uh, uh, to rely on the default router to send any packet with a destination outside this subnet, outside this broadcast domain. <coughs> okay. So is this clear about the different? Well, we're talking about uh, broadcast domain. Uh, you could have uh, LAN or VLAN in the layer two, but you'll be subnet in layer three, and uh, you can configure LAN several LAN together or several ports, selected port of lands together in to form a VLAN. But in the subnet you, you can do that. Uh, and and the bridges could uh could uh transparently the bridges transparently uh, interconnect uh LAN or VLAN but a router uh interconnect subnet but in a non transparent manner in a non transparent way. To interconnect them, they are tr they are visible. The router are visible to the host. The host would need to if if, I, if the host have a packet to a a a a destination outside the subnet, it will send it to the default router, and so it knows this guy is default router. It's not transparent. The default router is not transparent anymore. But if it's a bridges. I send it to I send it to the the network and the bridge is supposed to 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 forward for me. I don't need to know who the bridge is. I don't need to know who 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 the bridge is. I just send it, uh, and it, it's in the same manner that this guy is on the same on the same uh, on the same is 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 in the same sub in the in the same broadcast domain as I. So I send it. And if it's not in this uh, land, it's the bridges who would do the job to forward. So it's transparent. But the router, the router is not visible. It's visible to this guy. But if, it is, if this is a bridge, it's transparent to this. Okay. <coughs> and we, in chapter one, we have we have uh, discussed the. Service model that of IP, which is connectionless and best ever. So the entire connectionless means stateless. Connectionless would mean stateless. So the the IP layer is stateless. So it's connectionless. Okay. So all the routers are stateless. However, however, you would say that. Well, we got TCP connection, so it's not connection. It's connection oriented. But remember, TCP is only Im only implement in the end host, not in the router. So the connection only exists between the the information of connection only be exists between on on the the host, the 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 client and server host. 
but not on the router. The router does not know. The router, the routers do not know the connection of TCP and or UDP. No, the connection of TCP. The TCP stage is only kept uh, at a client and server machine host, not on the routers. So, <coughs> so that's one one thing to to clarify. So the IP router remains stateless. <coughs> and this best effort, it means that it will try its best to deliver the packets. However, it might be lost. It might be delivered, delivered but out of order. Out of order means <coughs> I send the packet 1, 2, 3, but the receiver received the packet 2, 3, 1. Then it's out of order. It's not in one, two, three. <coughs> for for most application, it's okay to have to be out of order, but for some application, it, it might be a problem. Okay, and uh, there might be duplicate copies of a packet being received, being delivered. For example, I send a packet, and uh, uh, and I thought it's. Well, the IP layer does not do retransmission, but perhaps the upper layer, the TCP, would do the retransmission. And perhaps TCP thought uh, the packet is lost, so I, I retransmit. But the packet was not lost. It was delayed, but not lost. So the packet, the first packet might be delivered successfully, but delayed a little time. And then the retransmitted packet will be delivered again. So there will be duplicate, duplicate packets. So it's possible to have duplicate packets. And it's possible for a packet to be delayed for a long time. OK, so these are the features, the, the, the characteristics of best effort delivery. And, and IP layer does next hub forwarding. It's not end-to-end -end forwarding, it's next hub forwarding. I only know, the router would only know which will be the next router. I would not know which will be the next next router or the entire path. I don't know. The router does not need to know that. Know that. The router just needs to know the next hub. And it does, it decides the next hub router based on the destination IP address. I need to forward a packet based on the destination address. And then I only need to decide who will be the next. The address, okay, and it's uh, it's the IP address or the network address. <coughs> it's a it's a it's a hierarchical address compared to the freight address in the in the in the link layer. So the MAC address, the MAC address is freight. Well, the six byte MAC address, we have seen the six byte MAC address. And the, the number, well, you have seen, you have seen uh, three bytes for the organization ID, but three bytes for, for the uh, number located by the vendor. However, the, this interface, the, this MAC address could be used anywhere in the world. The, when, when manufactured, after manufactured, it will be shipped to any, any place in the world. And so the address does not mean any information does not imply any location information. The address is free, does not lo imply any location information. So that's why we call the MAC address, which is the hardware address. Sometimes we call the hardware address. It's freight. But the IP address, which is the software address, why we call it software address? Because it's configured in a file, in a configuration file. So it's software address, and it's a uh, it's hierarchical. It implies when it's hierarchical, it implies where it is. Where it is. So given an IP address, and any any IP address, it should imply where it is. If it's a loc if the if the entire address space is lo located to Mexico. So any address within that domain within that area should be in Mexico and shouldn't be in uh, Africa. 
so it's hierarchical. And having a hierarchical address would would uh, easy ease many things. So so when it, when you get a, a a packet with a destination IP address, you know where to where to forward the packet to because the IP address implies the location. <coughs> okay, deliver packets. Uh, how how to deliver packets? Oh, uh, there'll be two parts in the control plane and the data plane. Routing for control plane and forwarding for the data plane. We have seen that many times. Okay, routing is too fine Look, to calculate the path. And it's done by routing protocol. Forwarding is to forward packet. And it's done by look up the table, look up the next hub from the routing table and then forward. And uh, forwarding, for forwarding, you you would take for, to forward packet. You take the IP address, destination IP address, from the packet, and then take it to uh, look up the routing table to match, to match the routing table. If there's a match, okay, you find the entry, and you you find the output interface of that entry, and then forward the packet. So it's a matching process. Actually, the routing table lookup is a matching process. And to, to design the routing table lookup, you, uh, there are issues, the, the time issue and the space issue. You want to be fast. You want, to, you want the table size to be small. So you need to have a good data structure which would uh, give you a fast lookup and fast table update. In the meantime, the, the table, the, the data structure will be small, low memory requirement, okay, fast and small. Okay, then uh, some, there are some classical data structure used, uh, for, for example, a try, which is similar to a tree, um, hash table, we have seen hash table everywhere in Linux kernel. We will continue to see, we will continue to see, we, for example, in, the, in chapter three, we have seen the, to see what? Self-learning forwarding table in bridging, right? There's a self-learning table, and that table is a hash table. And you will see uh, in Linux kernel, the, the routing table is a hash table, but it's an, actually it's an array of hash tables an array of hash tables. And there are some other tables, and, th and also there are some, uh, could be a hardware implementation. Okay, routing at a control plane, it's to calcul calculate the, the shortest path. And uh, in, in doing the calculation, you want to be, uh, to find an efficient path or you want to have a scalable calculation, or you want to be, have a stable path, robust path, or fair path. So, so, so it depends on uh, what, what you are looking for. And the, on, on internet, they, they are looking, they calculate the shortest path, and shortest in terms of time, the latency, the delay. They don't consider the robustness, stableness, stability, or fairness. They don't consider that. They consider the shortest path, and shortest in terms of latency. <coughs> and in doing the calculation, you calculate. We have mentioned in chapter one, it does uh, hub by hub routing instead of end-to-end -end routing or scope or something called source routing. Well, it allows source routing. It's an option, an IP option, an IP layer option, and up, or as I should say, an option at the IP header. Uh, we, but with that, without the source routing option, mostly you would use a hub by hub routing, meaning that you would just uh, find the next hub. You don't, you don't calculate the entire path. 
you just calculate the next hop. Okay, and it's, it is shortest path routing, not considering reliability, scalability. And uh, the, the way you calculate the shortest path is based on some information. And the information could be global information or local information. Global information means that you have the, the, the network topology. You have the entire topology of the domain or the, or the network that you want to calculate from. That's global information. But local information means that you don't have the entire topology, but you have some partial information of the entire network, but not the topology. And usually local information is, is you got the local information by exchanging with neighbors. But for global information, you broadcast. If everyone broadcasts the its own information, I broadcast my 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 links information. Then uh, all the other router in the domain will receive the same thing, and I will receive the 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 same thing from all the other router, and from that I can construct the topology, the entire topology of the network. So that's, uh, that's global information. Another way of local information, uh, another way is by local information by exchanging with neighbor. I just tell my neighbors what, uh, okay, what I have known. I have known something, I tell my neighbors. Then you won't get the entire topology. And you will see that um, OSPF, OSPF rely on this. You, it, it does the calculation, uh, which is the diastral algorithm. And the diastral algorithm computes on a topology, a, 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 an entire topology. So that's OSPF. But for RIP, it rely on the local information only. And BGP, also rely on local information only. So, so you got three uh, most used uh, routing protocol. RIP used this, uh, sorry, OSPF used this, but RIP and o BGP use this. <coughs> and if you want to have global information, then you need to flood or broadcast in the domain, in, in the network, in order to get the global information. In order to get everyone, every router, with the global information, then you rely on this. But if you just do neighbor exchange, then you got local information only. <coughs> multicasting. We have seen that we have said that uh, multicasting is to uh, communicate between a group of hosts. So if I send a packet to this group, the packet should be forwarded to all members of this group, all group members. Okay, and I want I want to do this not by the 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 host, the source. The source just send one packet, and then the routers do does the job. The routers do the job to forward the packet to all the group members then uh, we are saying that the routers provide multicast services. However, <coughs> in order to, to do this, the router have a lot of things to do. It will need to manage the groups, group members, group membership. So it needs to know who are in the group multicast group. So, so in order to, to know that, you would need to keep the state keep the state information, the group membership information in the routers, which will turn the router from stateless to stateful. That, that failed that fail the IP multicast. And again, this will fail the multicast too. The, the, the router will need to uh, uh, kind of maintain the multicast tree, multicast tree. And we will see how the, the tree is maintained. Actually, it does not maintain the tree explicitly. 
it maintained the tree implicitly. And we'll, we'll see what I mean by implicitly. However, they all need to, uh, the router needs to keep the state, keep the state of the tree, and keep the state of members, membership. And that would all turn the router into stateful. That fail, that might be multicasting. The multicast tree is the, a tree connect the source node to all the other destina all the destination nodes. Okay, IP security, the security issue, uh, the aspect of the network security. Uh, <coughs> when we are talking about security, we talk about three things. One is access control, uh, control controlling who has the right to access what. Who has the right to access what? <coughs> or the data security, you want to protect the data, protect the private data on the public internet. That's data security. And then you have system security, which is sometimes called intrusion detection, which will detect uh, illegal break-in. <coughs> For these three issues, we will see uh, it's, it's a treat, they are treated comprehensively, more comprehensively in chapter 8. But how, why we should need, need to consider this at the IP layer? That's because uh, we can do access control based on, say, IP address. Say, I, I don't want, uh, uh, I want to limit the access to uh, a certain network address, a certain subnet, for example then uh, it, it needs to be done at the IP layer. And if I want to do the, uh, protect the private data by encryption, and I want the encryption to be done on the IP layer, then I need to implement in the IP layer. Then it's called uh, IPsec. There's a protocol called IPsec, SEC, which stands for security. And it does the encryption at the, the network layer, the, at the IP layer. And what it does is uh, that it would uh, encrypt the entire IP packet and then add another IP header. So you would have an IP packet encrypted, but add on another IP header, which is not encrypted. Okay. So then that IPsec would need to be done at a network, at a IP layer. And how about intrusion detection? <coughs> right now, most intrusion are on attacking the application servers or application client, mostly. However, there are, there are indeed some attacks on the IP layers. For example, I, I want to attack the uh, IP layer within the kernel, then uh, Say I, I want to say I want to launch an attack of fragment IP fragmentation attack. I want to fragment packet into very tiny small packets. Say every say instead of sending a, a packet IP packet with a, uh, one thousand five hundred bytes, I break down into one thousand five hundred packets, and each packet will just carry one payload, one byte payload then that could be an attack that would keep the IP layer very busy because uh, they need to handle a large number of small tiny packets. Then, uh, oh, I, want to, uh, I want to attack the IP layer by, by putting uh, some embedded, fielding up embedded uh, header fields in IP headers. Then uh, it could be an attack too. However, those kind of attacks are less often to appear, but most attacks are on, again, a, an application client or servers, not at the IP layer. On the IP layer, there are fewer, there are fewer attacks. <coughs> okay, so we would not treat, uh, we would not talk about the security further on in this chapter. Instead, we will talk about security in, the, the, in chapter eight. 
And it, within chapter eight, we have talked about something related to the network layer. For example, access control, you will see a firewall, TCP IP firewall. It rely on IP address and port number to do the access control. And you will see uh, IPsec, which is to resolve the uh, uh, data security by IPsec VPN, virtual private network. So we will see that in chapter eight. And we will see uh, intrusion system security, but mostly in the application layer, not the IP layer. So within this chapter, we will not talk about security further. The next thing will be on IP layer, IP protocol, and V4 and V6. Mm -hmm.